Columbia Precision have just invested in the very first MAM 7252V in the UK. Now this company pride themselves on producing quality and complex components. They already have six Matsuras. So should we go find out why they chose to invest in this one? I think you have more opportunities with the unmanned and the style of machines like Matsura, whether whether pallet loading machines or robot loading, because you, you are reducing the labour content uh, or the labour cost content into the hourly rate of that job, uh, which then enables you to compete on a world stage with the likes of the low cost economies, uh, especially if you've got high quality complex parts. Uh, these machines are so accurate that you, you, you've got confidence the parts are going to come up right rather than one man standing at the machine just watching until the cycle finishes. They're in a league of their own. They're like night and day compared to a lot of the other machining centres that you see around. We do use uh, other multiple different types of machining centres but I would never rely on anything as much as I rely on a Maxero machining centre. Hence the reason why we've got so many of them. Uh, the solution that Matsura have given us is a quality machine, more pallets than the, a lot of machine tools out there, that gives us the ability to run longer hours over weekends in an unmanned situation. And the quality of the machine that they produce uh, maintains the standard that we have to give to our customers. We'd already got several MAMs uh, on a smaller capacity, the 35Vs, the 63Vs, and when they introduced this into the, uh, their portfolio of machine tools, it just suited the capacity of a 52 or a 520 mil diameter pallet uh, with 15 pallets on that machine and it just fitted out where we needed to be in the future. As a manufacturing manager, it's all peace of mind and being able to rely on the machine to produce parts at a specific standard and quality every single time. And with the Matsura machines, we don't ever tend to have any problems with them. They hold a very good tolerance uh, and you've always got peace of mind because they, they always perform perfectly well. Richard, the MAM at 7252V, where does it sit then within your machine shop? What is it doing differently to the other machines? Well, uh, I like to think of it as a, a kind in between between the 35V and the 63V being uh, a 15 pallet machine but slightly bigger pallets than the 35 and slightly more pallets than the 63 which enables us to produce larger size diameter work uh, uh, on a more uh, a, a larger scale. I went to look at the machine uh, in August September uh, in 21 uh, after learning that the machine was about to be launched or they were going to launch it before Christmas uh, went up to see the machine at Matsura and I was impressed straight away with the, the advancements they had made in the technology on the machine, uh, the electronic clamping and braking system uh, and the capacity of the machine, the size with that, that sort of 50, 52 or the 520 mil pallet size. Uh, and on the way back I thought I need that machine so I rang a few customers uh, in, with a cap in hand and said have you got any work for us if I buy this machine would you support us and they said well we'll send some quotes out and um, yes they did they, they have supported us uh, and that, that, that machine is now running 24-7. We've run and manned on these machines now for about 20 years um, and it's, it's, it's the quality of the machine and the rigidity of the spindle and this all round performance of the machine that gives you confidence that you can leave the machines to run on their own without having any issues. Being a quality manager we have to maintain the service plans on the machines to make sure they're always performing at the highest possible standards. I'd say that 90% of a service is making sure the machines are clean. You get a lot of residue in the air, in the air from coolants which will affect your internal computers. So we'd like to think we keep a very clean shop. I say a clean shop is a safe shop and we know that the machines are looked after well and they're always maintained to the best of the, that we can do. We do like the size of the windows, size of the doors for getting into the machine and the large control panels. They're quite tactile, as a, a lot, they're quite easy to find, uh, all the information that you're looking for, the buttons to press. 
they're not a lot different to the older models. Uh, if you were using an older model and you had a new one fitted, it would only take you a day or so to get your head around the way the, the, the new buttons lay out. They're essentially the same, but you don't change something that's not broken. Off camera, you've told me about a part that you're really impressed that you've made on this machine, so can you show it me? I can, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a fuel system for an aerospace company. Uh, the machine itself produces good fin service finishes anyway, that's what I do. But in this case, with the rigidity of the spindle and the work holding on the pallets, it gives us a better surface finish and uh, a lot better uh, material removal over the course of the job. We make this part from uh, solid metal, solid uh, billet. So it's important for us to get good life and uh, out of the tools for the job to be able to produce the parts uh, at a cost-effective rate. It's the same with all technology. Uh, Matsura are a very good company as it is. and We rely heavily upon these machines because of their capabilities. But like all technology, it progresses, so the Matsura will progress. So you'll always get a better version, a more effective version. So we'll always stay with this sort of machine and center. When you first get into unmanned manufacture, uh, it seems a bit daunting because one, you don't think the machine will do the job overnight without a man standing there, but it will do. And you have to have confidence in the machine. Again, the Matsura machines, the quality, and their reliability have been second to none. Um, and don't push the machines to the, to the limit. You know, if you're running lights out, run them with a, a bit of a buffer zone there so that you're not pushing the, the cutting tools to the max. And then you can come in on a morning and hopefully you've got, uh, you've got a, a good set of components that have come off the machine. Any regrets? No, none at all. Uh, the only regret probably, I should have done it five years earlier when I first saw the machine.